Oh, hi, it's Opai, and welcome back to Let's Play Katsawa Shoujo. Yeah, <laughs> last time, uh, Pan Anning has uh, told me my commentary wasn't picked up, and it was true, unfortunately, even though I was talking, but unfortunately my mic was not picking up. Uh, I don't know why, but I think it had something to do with the updates that uh, my system had, and uh, unfortunately there were certain settings that weren't uh, saved to the program and uh, had to redo it so now it's being recorded and we must move forward unfortunately last time uh, we had a pajama party with the girls uh, we're getting more affectionate with Lily and now we are at a date which uh, we set up for Lily even though we didn't pick out the place but uh, Lily did I assume Oh wait, actually she can't see, fuck. We, uh, I, <clears throat> I assume we picked it out. <clears throat> but anyways, let's continue. I'm pretty sure this is about the last thing I had in mind when Lily says she decided where to have her day. Oh no, she she decided, but... I'm just, oh, well, maybe she had an idea. No man nor woman is dressed in anything but their finest... Their format late only matched by that of their surroundings. Rich red wallpaper adorns the walls as the city lights far below flicker and glow. Combined with the ambient hum of quiet speech and the high-pitched clattering of cutlery and wine glasses, the mood is very formal, yet relaxed enough for me not to feel too uptight despite this being our first real date. Once we get seated, our waiter leaves to attend to others with a quick bow, and after an appreciative nod from Lily. Far from depending on my help, Lily's managed to navigate herself around surprisingly easily so far, despite the unfamiliar environment. A light brush here and there, and she's generally quite deft at orienting herself as needed. Oh my god! <laughs> she's dressed in one of those? Oh, Lily, I love you so much! Jesus Christ, this makes me love her even more! Whew. My eyes look to Lily's. I can tell from her face that she's listening to her surroundings just as hard as I'm looking. Truth be told, my eyes are lingering on her each time they sweep across the room. A red Chiong Sam she's wearing. Chong Sam? I think that's what it's called. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. She's wearing her, assinuates her figure very well and shows off her legs. Even that her hair is done up in the scent of her perfume is just noticeable. Oh my god. I need a picture of this. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Show the image. Jesus Christ, I need this. There we go. Oh man. Just look at that, man. Can I see the legs too? Oh, I want to see the legs too. <laughs> While my black suit may be a rental, I managed to select an appropriate one. It feels surprisingly comfortable considering I've so rarely worn one. It fits the setting just as well as Lily's attire. I guess this is the new experience for both of us then. She turns so much sheepish. I've never come to a place such as this before, no. One hell of a first date, that's for sure. It's gonna be pretty hard for me to top this. It's gonna be pr and I'm pretty hard right now. <laughs> a small giggle, even now her nervousness is dissipating. Her hand skates along the center of the table until it touches the menu, which she takes both in both hands and brings to her face. Um, he saw. As she lowers the beige laminated sheet just below her eyes, I can see another sheepish look. Can she? Oh wait. She yeah, I doubt really asking the waiter for a menu in Braille would be productive. Right, it's like she got a menu, but she can't see. I can read it out for you, no problem. <clears throat> I can take I take mine and give it a quick read. My small grin faltering, you know. Probably some fancy shit. Uh, perhaps there's... What's wrong? Um... There are quite a few items on here, and I'm not completely sure how to pronounce a couple of them. One fine cuisine after another is listed. Most of them may be in Japanese, but few are in English and French. I guess it's to be expected, but I have no idea what's in some of these. Oh, this one I recognize. Wait, hang on. You can cook that? A small giggle of amusement comes from behind the paper sheet. 
Well, I could read them all out, but it'd take a few hours. Is there anything with some kind of fish in it? <laughs> uh, no. Let's see. No, 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 no. Aren't there... Aren't those poisonous? No, no, no. They eat stuff. They eat that stuff? No, 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 no. Uh, ah, here we go. Uh, tuna salad seems to be a good bed. From the picture, it looks like it'd be pretty filling as well. That seems to be a reasonably safe option. Uh, let's order two, then. I'm pretty sure a couple of these dishes are for poisonous animals. I've had enough deadly run-ins for now. Late maintain a smile, but there's a distinct lack of laughter. Black humor mustn't be her cup of tea. Though, to be honest, I don't find it exceedingly funny either. There are certainly quite a f oh, mm. there are certainly quite a few interesting smells wafting about. The same is true of uh, the sights, I assume. I've never been anywhere quite like this. Fancy Japanese tea house on an occasion or two, but never anything this lavish or nor uh, European is in styling. Before another word can be said, a poorly waiter in in a distressingly tight vest appears at a table to take over us. Oh shit! <laughs> if I had Pen Anning here, he would be the uh, um help me here with this. <laughs> I can't read this, I'm sorry. <coughs> I hope I didn't mess this up the pronunciation of that too badly. That was a very bad translation. Even if I did, he doesn't show it. And may I have a glass of Chardonnay, please, Hissau? Oh, uh, the same. As the waiter nods and leaves, I suddenly realize what I said it by absentmindedly mimicking Lily's answer. I regret it pretty quickly. Alcohol? Only a bit. Oh, jeez. Nah, only a bit my ass. <laughs> you know. That's, this girl's got an odd propensity to getting hooked on things. I swear. But I love her. Surprisingly, they didn't ask for identification. Then again... I guess we both do look much more for our age. I'll have to take your word for it. I'll add that this is, isn't is what I call the type of place to ask such things, though. Mm, good point. We both relax a little into our seats, trying to take our minds off the choking formality of the surround surroundings. As we, as soon as we do, the same waiter reappears at our table with two empty glasses and a bottle, the contents of which are quickly and professionally poured into the former. We both nod politely as he leaves, slowly taking her glass and gently moving it from side to side. The liquid inside glistens as it moves around the, in the glass. And I have to admit it, that makes me a little less regretful for ordering the same. I guess it must take effort to judge how the liquid inside is acting based only on its center of balance. Maybe it's like her origami, taking in every little chance to practice her dexterity. Hmm, I guess I'm not surprised to know a little that about a place like this, those who have money would, I suppose. This reminds me of just how completely different our upbringings were. In Yamaku, it's easy to forget about social and economic disparity between students all wearing the same uniforms, living in the same dormitories. Well, Akira was the one to tell me of it. She's come here before, apparently. Oh, so that's how she knew about this place. So that's what they were conspiring about on Friday. Ah, okay. Damn. And you chastise me for cheating? That's not cheating. That's It's simply making use of personal context. <clears throat> if you say so. Still, I get the feeling that you're more familiar with this kind of restaurant than I am. She pauses for a moment, a wistful look on her face before softly smiling. The compliment seems to brighten her mood. You can thank my former school for that. If I were to appear any less, they'd be gravely disappointed. <clears throat> she had mentioned her previous school in four, but now I'm kind of curious. She seems to think of a lot about her past, so I don't see any problem in asking. What was that like? It was prestigious, all girls and Catholic. These facts made my parents choose it for me. Many wealthy families sent their daughters there. Hmm. From how it sounds, life... There must be pretty strict. 
I wouldn't say it was a bad experience, but you're quite right. It was very strict. Thankfully, I managed to adapt well enough and make a number of friends. Uh, unfortunately, the same cannot, can't be said for my sister. She found the atmosphere and the religious aspect su suffocating and ended up leaving for a job as soon as she was able to. She gives a small self depreciating chuckle. I shouldn't complain about it, though. Not even, not many even have the chance to go in such a school. Do you resent your parents for sending you there and leaving? She gently shakes her head. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm clearing the throat. I should have grabbed some water for that. <clears throat> Fuck it, hey. My family is highly... Patricial, Patricial, or sorry, my father' business son always on her, on his mind and was entirely lost to, as to what it, to do with me. In the end, he made the decision that my education was higher priority than staying with the family. He simply did what he thought was best. To say such things so easily, Ugh, what an unbelievable girl. That said, I'm a little surprised she doesn't think her blindness had played any part of it at all. Though, maybe I'm being too harsh on her family. You're too kind-hearted, you know that. Hmm? Most would hate their parents for something like that. Well, some do. Oblivious to my raised eyebrows, she takes a sip from her glass. The wine slips down effortlessly, fondness for it evidently helping her deal with the, fla with the flavor of alcohol. I can't say the same that goes for me. What of yourself? What was your schooling like? Mine? Let's see. It was a fairly normal public school, I suppose. Maybe a bit busier than the norm. I did quite well in my class and played in the soccer club. Since I'm the only, since I am an only child and my parents both worked a lot, I wasted most of my free time and money at the arcade with my three friends. No matter how much I played, though, I never did manage to beat my any of the, those machines. Even Takumi and Shin lost to whatever they tried. Then I left trying to be the responsible adult when Shin and my fought. Again, just the four of us, aimlessly enjoying our childhood. Those were some pretty silly times. I catch myself as I realize that I'm starting to zone out. The days of my old school disappearing to the night sky and the pretty bright city lights outside the window. Lily's face is an odd mixture of curiosity and sympathy. Given her strict schooling, I suppose something like this would seem an interesting contrast to the only life she's known. It sounds like your previous school was a lot of fun. I'm not really sure how much, how much of it is nostalgia, but there are some nice memories. That's in the past, though. I can't go back there now. But though my, through my accident, I found a new life I never have imagined leading. The peace and calm in Yamaku, and my new direction for my future in science, my friendship of Sejuni, Misha, and Hanako, and most of all, you. Oh, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. She gives a deep, genuine smile as she moves her hands towards me, her fingers just lightly searching out my face before softly caressing my cheek. Her hand reluctantly re retreats after a second of warm silence as we notice the waiter arriving with our meals. Lily does a deft job of covering her condition, except for the fact that her nod to him is slightly misaligned due to his silence. She really seems to work hard at appearing as normal as possible in public. While I noticed that a long ago, I still can't quite gauge whether it's a want not to be treated differently. A slight sense of vanity or some mixture of both. The dish serves lined the dish serves lives up to the salad name and the portions pleasantly large with sliced eggs and tomato it looks very enticing indeed <clears throat> Lily takes her knife in one hand and fork in the other quickly getting to work on the dish as I do it's later than we when we usually have dinner so we're eager both eager to dig in my cautious skewing skewering of leaves and vaguely meat like squares with my fork is matched by Lily's silent and measured prodding and chewing an occasional tap around the size of the piece of the food to work out its edges is the only giveaway to lack of, to her lack of sight. <clears throat> I'm done with my meal in a little time. I'm really taking the last few bites as I sit observing her. Finish, Isao? 
Yeah, it was pretty nice. That much is very true. I never thought a simple salad could be so tasty and filling. But then again, I suppose that's why it costs so much to eat here. Content with my appreciable appraisal and eventually greeting, Lily gives a small nod. You know, given that you're part foreign, exotic looking, and quite pretty, I'm surprised that nobody's ever confessed to you before. You're assuming nobody did. That simple statement taking me off guard. I shouldn't be surprised given that I was complimenting her just moments before. Oh, uh, really? I've reached, I've received several confessions, both in this school and my previous one. Adolescence is a funny time. She's kind of taken as if she's above it herself. Huh? How easily you say such a thing. <clears throat> Lulu looks surprised for a moment before a playful smirk covers her face. Is that jealousy? Uh, what? No, no, it isn't. <clears throat> You're a bad liar, Hisao. You should take it in that into account. <clears throat> then again, I do appreciate how sincere you are, even if you don't tend to be sometimes. I think your honesty will s always serve you well when dealing with others. <clears throat> I clear my throat in mock disapproval of this whole business and try to steer the conversation elsewhere. To tell the truth, though, I do prefer solitude to be surrounded by others. I don't think I could t maintain this social circle like you do. She contemplates this for a moment. I don't think that's true either. I've seen how gentle and caring you are around with Hanako, and then, and then you get on marvelously well with the others, even though whom you, even those whom you hardly know. I think you're quite adept at social situation. But on that note. What of your confessions, Hisao? I'm sure someone like you must might have at least one admirer. As I open my mouth to speak, I can feel my face turn slightly dour. At times like this, I secretly appreciate the fact that she can't see my expressions. Just one. Her name was Iwanako. It was when she confessed to me that I had my heart attack there in the woods during winter. Lily finds herself speechless, not expecting for the topic to move on su into such an area. Well, it was, it's true, that's how this game started. My condition has always been something of a concern for her, something that I strive to minimize despite my body's best efforts to the contrary. Afterwards, she visited me for a while and while I was in the hospital. For weeks, she came and, and talked. It was usually just small talk or classroom gossip, but that was enough. But eventually, she stopped coming. She was there every day, then every other day, then once a week. Then finally one day, she just stopped the visiting entirely. Did you ever see her again? Wrapped in my own little world, I shake my head before remembering the futility of my uh, gesture. Ah, uh, shit. Uh, this decision, I think... Hold on a second. Actually, yeah. Act 4... Uh, I did read on that Act 4 is has only one decision in this. And, uh... This is it right here. Uh, this is, uh... Act 4 only has one decision, and this decision does matter because the fact, uh... This determines your ending. One gives you a good ending, the best ending, and one gives you just a normal ending. But uh, thankfully, I've come across this, so now I can save here. And I plan, I actually planning to show both endings. I don't know how long this will take, but I want, I've been wanting to uh, show both for Lily Sun. So let me save here. Make a save. Great, a new save. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Lily has only two endings, and uh, this this is it right here. Uh, other characters, other characters in this game either have either good endings or bad endings, or maybe three endings. I don't know, but we're get, we'll eventually get to those. But uh, anyways, so let's shoot for the good ending, which is uh, let's uh, mention the letter. Yeah, dropping this subject would uh, be kind of harsh, so probably like that would be a normal ending. Would make sense. 
So let's uh, talk about the letter. The memory of that single letter Monaco sent me sent me comes back to my mind. I never saw her again, but after I was sent to Yamako, she wrote me one letter. Lily's face shows an expression I know well. I piqued her interest. I'd be slightly offended if it's simply a matter of curiosity for her, but she's never been very good at masking her reactions. In hindsight, it really didn't say much. What was going on in my own class, how was she faring, and, and almost as an afterthought. That it was probably best for the both of us that we don't see each other again. After reading it, I ended up reassessing a lot of things I thought I managed to work out. For the most part, that letter reminded me that the world around me was still moving, and just how much I'd become isolated from it. And I guess it also reminded me of what I lost. She gives me the information some thought before her face lights up in realization. No doubt she's worked out that it was this letter that she had contributed to my angst during the lunch on the rooftop. It's a rare sight to see that Lily, quite so lost for words, only oh, her entire persona is a little deflated from her earlier rap's interest. As charismatic, Kar sorry, as he, she is, in the end, that isn't any replacement for life or relationship experience. Perhaps it is better she sent it than not. How's that? It can be difficult to work out how best to communicate with those who I haven't met in a long time, all the more so considering your separate situations. Instead of doing what was easiest, she built up the courage to talk to you one last time, not only for her sake, but how, from how it sounds for yours as well. Maybe. I don't hate her for it, nor that I really ever did, but I don't know. Probably a more non-committal committal answer that I should give. But it isn't without cause. I never looked at the situation from me and Monaco's perspective like that before. Seconds passed in silence before Lily speaks again. Moving to Yamaku must have been hard for you, to having your friends and even your girlfriend taken from you for no fault of your own. The worst of it passed while I was in the hospital. When all that surrounds you is four white walls and a small television, your mind takes on a life on its own. It's like my old school, I guess. I just try not to dwell on what's happened and keep thinking ahead. All that rem reminiscing does get me down, is get me down, and it's largely thanks to you that it feels like things are finally getting back on track. That's pleasing to hear, Yasuo. She lowers her face slightly, her expression pensive. I guess I went too far and embarrassed her. I suppose you went through something like, something a bit like that when I did when you entered Yamako anyway, right? I imagine the vast majority of our school's students did, after all. You said yourself that you made friends in your school, old school. I can't imagine many followed you. Lily's steep smile drops, her expression unexpectedly darkening. Even her hands retreat to her lap. After a long while, she speaks. Hiso, can you promise not to tell anyone I'm about to- I promise. She looks slightly taken aback by my serious tone but then relents and smiles weakly before continuing. When I moved to Yamaku, I did regret losing the friends I had at my other school, but there was one person whom I most regretted not seeing again. He was the reason I took up English as a future career. He? Considering she came from an old girls' school, that, I can't, that can't have been a schoolmate then. I rejected the confessions I had received until then for him, every time I improved my English skills, his praise was the most treasured reward. It's funny, isn't it? Someone like me able to boast about the people who had set eyes on me, liking someone so utterly unattainable as my tutor. Is It truly is the most ridiculous thing. Did you? She quickly shakes her head from side to side. I couldn't. Even then, I knew it was impossible. A silence reigns for over both of us. This does seem to explain her ardent, ardent focus on her future to teach you English, but I can't help thinking that of her confession to me. She lost him without even letting her feelings be known. Did she somehow fear that that would happen again, but with me? I don't really know what, what to make of it. 
I've heard such of such relationships before. Taboos born and of such things as purity and youth. The fact that she had a good judgment not to act on it, though, is heartening. I know this must such stra sound strange, but please, don't think of me. Why would I think any less of you for that? To be honest, I think he mu must have been a very nice person if you liked him so much. Not only that, but you stopped yourself before going too far. For a moment, she looks somewhat lost. Most ex unexpectedly, though, it isn't a second before she starts to laugh. The sound takes me off guard. It's not a giggle or nor a restrained chuckle, but a honest and genuine laughter. I find myself smiling, and not just at her display of relief and happiness, but to her, but for her to trust me enough to let me see this most private of secrets. Before I realize it, I feel her palm touching my face. Her touch is as gentle as ever. Her thumb slowly stroking my cheek. You're kind, Yusel. I really do love you. Seeing her face like this, with her palms gently caressing my face, I think tonight has been a wonderful night. <laughs> I guess we have both we've both had pretty rude past, eh? I think by most standards our present is rather odd as well. I giant I smile and hang my head. This woman can easily run rings around me. Of that I'm quite sure. I look back around the room for, with its continuing quiet hum of patrons. This place probably fits into the odd category too. It is a tad overbearing. That's one for it, yes. I catch the eye of a scurrying waiter. A short scrawny guy no older than 20. He reminds me of Kenji. Though unlike him, the waiter isn't dressed for winter during midsummer. After a curt bow and an offer to remove our plates, Lily asks for the bill politely and softly. With expert coordination, he maneuvers around the tables, our plates in hand to retrieve our bill. And in no time, he reappears through the doors, smartly hanging our bill to Lily, who promptly hands it to me, causing him to raise an eyebrow. As I read the small computer-printed leaflet, the cost is considerably more than I expected. Yes, Al? Oh, uh... I quickly stammer out the amount which, into which Lily m merely m nods and reaches for her purse. Giving her card to the waiter, he di disappears once again. That was uh, disproportionately amount, large amount of money. The statement seems to make Lily slightly uncomfortable. My family leaves me more than enough for my education. The same goes for my sister, though she dislikes being reminded of that fact. That said, I too dislike throwing my money about. Throwing money about, but this one time I think I can make an exception just for you. Not only did you choose our date, you but you paid for both of us as well. I take the bridge of my nose into my fingers. I can't believe how high you set the bar for our next date. She gives a small giggle. I'll be looking forward to it, Hisao. The waiter reappears beside us as if by magic, and hands Lily cart, Lily's card back to her. Evidently picking up on her lack of sight, he places the card on it in her hand with an extra, perhaps unneeded, amount of firmness to make sure of her grip. Leaving, he exercises a measure of diplomacy by keeping a neutral face despite my own expression. Clapping my hands together, I stand up from my seat in order to bring an end to our night out. Shall we be off, Min Lee? Alright. We're a little 28 minutes in, but uh, I would like to continue this. Gah! I snap upwards out of my sheets and sit bolt, bolt upright in bed, as an electric shock just had just run through my entire body. The night air feels cold against my the sweat of my bare skin, my breathing short of rugged nearly to the point of hyperventilation. My racing, I bring my head to my head in an attempt to soothe my body's panic state. It takes me a number of seconds to realize my hand is shaking violently, even as I press it against my face. More seconds pass in complete silence, my desperate attempts to subdue my body and mind slowly, thankfully working. Gathering myself, I start taking measure of a state I'm in. It feels like I've run a marathon, every muscle and feeling tense and sweat practically pouring off me. I carefully direct my attention to the beating of my chest, measuring out the rhythm of my head, 
Sure enough, my unreliable heart is functioning properly. For once. Just, what the hell was that? Heart attack? Bad nightmare? Medicine side effects? I've heard about panic attacks, and does, this does seem to have the hallmarks of one. I can't even be bothered thinking about it right now. I feel utterly exhausted yet completely awake after this experience. I look over to the other side of my bed, the pale white of the silent figure's face almost glowing in the nighttime darkness of the room. Just the sight of her is enough to calm me down significantly. Wait, Lily's sleeping with us? Yes! Yes! Lily's sleeping with us! Alright! Her graceful demeanor persists even if, while she's asleep. Her perfectly measured breathing and gentle face making it, po making it impossible to tell whether she's awake or truly sleeping. Given into temptation, I dedicatedly run my fingertips over her hand. Her skin is soft at the touch, as it always has been, yet warm even in the cold night. It's times like this, silently appreciating each other's presence, that I feel that we're closest. My fingers stop at her wrist, and I bring my head back down to the bed beside me. I'm not entirely sure why, but as we became ever closer to each other, it felt as if something grew between us. I'm not entirely sure what it is, nor whether it existed before we even fall in love. Everything is moving so fast. I don't mind it at all, but it feels like, unlike uh, Lily, to be pushing things through this much. Um, thankfully, there aren't any students milling around the hall in the hallways at this hour of the morning, lest I be interrogated by on why I'm carrying two plates of breakfast into my room while dressed in an obviously hastily donned uniform. That isn't to say things like this ever happen, of course. A single security guard patrolling between two sets of bedrooms situated right next to each other is a very small force compared to the adolescent hormones. Come to think of it, the fact that it's Monday morning probably helps. I'm not really sure why, but Mondays seem to bother me less than they do most others. It takes a little creative use of my hands and elbow, but eventually I manage to work the door to my dormitory room open. Stepping aside, I see Lily just getting up from the bed and tiredly rubbing her eyes. She looks like a mess. She looks a mess, just like most other times I've seen her soon after she wakes. She really isn't a morning person. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. She groggily shakes her head. The morning light illuminating her makes for a very pleasant sight. It's okay. I need to get up anyway. What time is it? I pull my plate down on my desk and turn the clock around to check the time. Still early. Don't worry. There's plenty of time left for before school. She sits on the side of the bed and begins to sniff the air. As she does so, I quickly move her plate away and put it on the desk behind side mine. Yes, uh, I got us some breakfast. Shower and clothes come first, though. Oh, she stands still for a moment with her chin pointed slightly out. I gladly equitas and press my lips toward hers, savoring the soft feeling before breaking off. With a small, sweet smile, I pre apparently is quite satisfied. <laughs> she slowly makes her way toward the showers. I stretch and try to wake myself up a little more, briefly looking at the st steaming dishes on my the desk. Rice, fish, and miso soup, and some vegetables. A standard breakfast for what's somewhat unusual today. Miso ramen soup! Sorry, it's a joke I have me even pen ending. Uh, I grab the bottles from my desk and start taking my daily regimen of pills. Sometimes I wonder what are what the what these things are even good for, given all the troubles I've had since the initial accident. I can't even say that it doesn't hurt hurt to take them, considering the side effects so far. Well, whatever. Doctor's orders are that I have to take them, and rationality suggests that I be well served to trust his judgment over mine. It doesn't take long for the noise for the shower to cease. A quick one, apparently. Being fine for a living, given the circumstances. Emerging from the bathroom, she looks significantly more awake, having had the chance to collect herself. Without a word, I gently take her hand in mine and guide her to my desk, considering I don't have a table in my room as she does. It'll have to do. Thank you, Hiso. What did you prepare for breakfast? Just rice and some vegetables. Something fast. Her face lights up in a revelation. That's quite a breakfast. Is this normal for you? 
Now she's just being nice. I have a little doubt, considering her past, that this isn't exactly a high-class meal by her standards. Uh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Just because we're students doesn't mean we can take it lightly. That's my belief. Anyway, from what others I've talked to and have said, I might be in the minority. I take a seat on the side of my bed and begin eating together with Lily. Her chopsticks lightly tapping out the outlines of the vegetables, just as I noticed her doing, do during the date. This is quite nice, Isao. I had no idea you could cook this well. This time, she's just, she's much more genuine. I can tell that much. That said, cooking really isn't anything special at all. After a bit of practice, it's pretty easy to make a simple dish. Uh, most of the credit goes to the modern technology. Still, after years of cooking for myself, I should hope so. I got bored of eating instant noodles and ordering pizza every time my parents were both working. So I taught myself how to make a few meals. I'm still trying to get the knack of it, though. You'll make a good wife someday. Hisao. I take a grain of rice and place it onto my thumb before carefully taking aim and giving a good flick. <laughs> Lily jumps a little as it hits her cheek, right on target. I can't help chuckling a little at her expense as she lowers her brow and tries to best to assume a harsh and serious expression. Oh, that's right. What is it? Did you have any problems sleeping last night? You seem restless. So she was awake back then. Or at least partly so. Whether it was my heart or a nightmare caused by the side effects of my medicine, the last thing I, w I want is for her to be worrying about me even more. Even before my relationship with Lily, it felt my body was on a drag on everything I did. My body is a burden alone, so as long as I'm with her, I'll continue to act as normally as possible. No, not particularly. Is that so? That's good then. Luckily, she seems to take me at my word. Come to think of it, there is something else I wanted to ask. Oh. Oh, how should I put it? When you dream, do you see people and objects? Yes, of course. I oh, I feel a little more. I feel more than a little sheepish for that slip of the tongue. However, earnest it may be, Lily looks un unperturbed. Though. But you don't taste, feel, or smell things. I move to answer, but find myself stuck before thinking about it. The more I mull it over, the more I realize that her hypothesis is correct. That's true, I guess. I never looked at it that way. Are you saying that I, you do? For the most part, I only hear in dreams, but yes, sometimes I touch and smell things as well. I'm just asking since Akira thought of it very strange that I did when I brought it up with her. If you don't either, then maybe it's due to my blindness. That won't make sense. You rely on your other senses more than me, so that maybe that affects your dreams as well. The wonders of a human body, I guess. For the rest of the time before school, we quietly eat the hearty breakfast in front of us, exchanging a few small pieces of small talk as we do. A quick peek out of the door assures nobody's looking directly at the entrance for the boys' dormitories, so we walk out with the path clear. Ah, uh, the weather is good today. I stretch as Lily and I make our way outside, the bright morning sun beaming down on us. By now, a few students can be seen doing the same, making their way to the main school building either from the dorms or through the main gate. It does feel nice and warm. Our hands linked and her cane tapping the ground. We begin in earnest our trip to the school building and join the chattering th throngs of students around us. I was going to say thong, <laughs> uh, but it's just throngs. This will be the last day of exams, no? Yeah, how are you going in them? Fairly well, all things considered. You seem a bit stressed by them, though. It's that obvious, huh? I don't think it's just the exams, though. A lot of stuff's been happening in a short amount of time. I'm not doing that well on the humanities subjects. <clears throat> You're doing well in science, though, aren't you? Well, it would be hard not to do well in science for me. Come to think of it, didn't you say before that you were very good at science and maths? She suddenly looks very sheepish. My remark, no doubt, hitting home. Lily's sense of pride really can be a double-edged sword. Well, aside from that, have you ever given the thought of what you might do with that ability? It seems a pity to waste it. 
A bit. Uh, mostly, I'm Muto's prompting. In any case, I'll probably end up doing science as a career for in some form. That's good to hear, Isao. As we entered the gardens, I suddenly received an unsolicited pat on the back. A green-dressed culprit uh, dances around to meet me, evidently not paying heed to Lily at my side. Oh, it's this fucker, probably. Yeah. Hey, man, what's up? Haven't seen you in a while. Hey, uh, just been busy lately with exams and stuff. Exams, sh ex shams. A true renaissance man needs no study to excel in such things. Kenji does strike me as a uh, kind of person that does well in school. Even if he has a horrid attendance record and poor work ethic, so I've little reason to doubt his ability. To be honest, I'm a little envious of him. Being s between studying for exams and my time with Lily, I've practically had no time to myself. Maybe this is a bit like how Yoko feels. Good morning, Seto. It's good to hear that you're doing well. It feels slightly odd to see you Lily speaking so formally. She's come to address me more casually over the months, though I've seen though I've seen her speak more formally to classmates from time to time as well. Some people never change, I guess. Not that I say her calm and polite manner is a bad thing. It was one of the reasons I liked being around her to begin with, after all. Kenji seems to take the moment to work out who it is beside me, and probably hasn't noticed us holding hands either. I wonder if those glasses of his actually do anything. Oh, hey, Lily. Good luck in your exams, too. I'll see you after school, then, man. The slight edge to his voice makes me think those words are meant to be in an imperative rather than a casual farewell. I guess I'll have to smooth things over later. Sure. See ya. Kenji nods curtly. He moves us. He moves to pass by us, but he's too busy glaring at Lily's general direction to take notice of her cane. Before I try to re before I can try to react and save the situation, Kenji trips and reflexively reaches out for a handheld or handhold. Fort unfortunately, said handhold turns out to be Lily's arm. Whoa! Ah! Both fall to the ground in a sprawling heap, with me left feeling rather helpless. Uh, damn! You two okay? Kenji quickly rises back up, seemingly unfazed by the accident. No problem, man, no problem. There is nothing my body can take much worse than abuse. Lily lies face down on the grass. She doesn't look hurt by the incident, more startled than anything. I move closer to offer, him, offer her my help. Are you alright, Lily? Hey, Satel. Genji offers her a hand, tentatively touching hers to let her know what she, he's doing. He said some odious things sometimes odious things sometimes, but I do think he may be generally a good person at heart. I imagine he feels pretty bad about this. To his surprise in mine, though, Lily pounds on the ground with her fist without warning. Damn it! Kenji freezes entirely caught by surprise at her outburst. I'm just as shocked that she's never acted like this before, not even around Shizune. Uh... Seemingly now only remembering that there are people around her, Lily slowly climbs to her feet. Her face, as she does so, makes me retreat a little. I only catch a glimpse of her expression before she turns away, but it's not something I'll forget soon. She's shown plenty of annoyance during her clashes with Shizune, but this flash of anger was something else. There's no way that this is just about a, this petty incident. She pauses for a moment before sighing and walking on ahead. I really don't know how to what to make of this. Oh, uh, talk to you later, dude. See you. Yeah, see ya. Kenji scratches the back of her head, trying to find something to say, then shrugs and walks away, giving us a white berth. I quickly catch up to Lily. She turns her head to acknowledge a little to acknowledge my presence, but nothing else. I should probably scold her for lashing out like that, but I also don't want to get into a shouting match with her. She's still very obviously annoyed. In the end, I keep my mouth shut and wait for her to cool off. Probably for the best. Damn pitcher. After a quiet walk in, we eventually reach the top of the third floor stairs and the junction where we park each every day. I turn to Lily before she leaves. While I do like the uncomfortable and warm silences we usually share, this was anything but. I don't want, I don't want to leave things like this. Uh, you seem quieter than usual recently. Is anything wrong? She shakes her head almost automatically, as to dispel any notion that I need to worry about her. It's just the exams are taking their toll, I'll be fine. 
I don't think that's the reason. I very nearly said so, but I decided against it. There's no point in drawing it out of her if she doesn't want to tell me, especially when she's in a foul mode like this. Yeah, if you're sure, I'll see you later then. As I turn down the hall to go to my classroom, Lily's soft voice rings out from behind me. Giselle, um... Yeah? I'm sorry. With that, Lily makes off down the hallway to her classroom, her hands skating along the metal railings. I stand still and watch her ish until she turns to her classroom and out of sight, before going to my own class with a fair measure of reluctance. As usual, I'm early. Moteau is fiddling with the folders and papers on his desk as he prepares for the day while a handful of students have milled about, chatting away. All my feelings about Lily had dis dissipated far from it. Her mention of my exam performance did remind me that I have my own life's journey to attend to. After thinking about it, I may have I have realized that I do genuinely want to pursue science in some form of career, as a career, rather than simply being the path of least resistance. Till now, though, I don't, I didn't have much of an idea where in a field I wanted to go to. Just science is a pretty broad category of jobs. Something Lily mentioned earlier focused my thoughts. Something I'd only idly ponder about before. I not seriously considered following the specific path. I walk up to him to his desk, his attention too focused on preparing for the day's lessons to notice my approach. It's the same every day. Uh, good morning. He looks up with an expression of mild surprise that's quickly replaced by his typical awkward smile. Mm, good morning, Nikai. Can I help you? Do you ask? Do you mind if I ask you something? He looks down on his messy pile of books on his desk before putting them down the papers in his hand and standing up with some difficulty to properly address me. Uh, that's what I'm here for. After all, ask away. I was wa just wondering, what would you say is the motivation behind teaching? He thinks on this question for a few moments before responding, eventually from far from having a prepared answer. Well, if you talk, if you talk to ten different teachers, I think you'll get ten different answers to that question. But I can only be speak for myself. I say I teach because. Hmm. He sinks into the thought again, carefully assessing the way he wishes to present his idea. Think of it this way: when you were a child, you probably played with sticks and pebbles and moving waters. Such as the gutter or puddles, right? Yeah, I think a lot of people do that when they were young. Well, it's just not when they were young for some, though it does take on another form. My point is, though, that when one is doing that, they are curious about how the water will flow or will be changed. Everyone, and even at that young age, possesses an intense wonderment about how the world around them works, even if it's in its smallest forms. I could still feel that sense of wonderment about the universe. Even just reading about new discoveries or classic experiments give me the, gives me a renewed sense of awe at how marvelous everything is, from the farthest stars to the smallest puddle. I just hope I, that I can give others even a small piece of that wonderment I feel. Even if I do, can do that, even if it's just for one person, I think that I could be happy as a teacher. He scratches his head as he mentally reviews of what he said. I feel like I understand it better, even though, he, even if he's awkward around the others, he does have a genuine want to be around them and offer them a piece of his self that he values. What Lily told me yesterday rings in my ears. I think you get on well with others, huh? She always did say that I was usually unusually curious. Sorry if that was a little mender meandering. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. I also had another question, actually. Oh, well, that, what might that be? Um, do you have any college brochures or guides? It's about time I started getting uh, some applications in. He nods and bends down to look at science desk. As he does so, I notice that he is wearing a remarkably genuine smile. I don't think I've ever really seen him act like this natural around others. Probably, perhaps this isn't Muto, the teacher, but rather Muto, the person. Here, if you need any more, feel free to ask. He hands me about half a dozen brochures and booklets of various colors and sizes, which I take eagerly. Yes, it will be this information which I use to forge my own future. I think now, after all this time and all these trials, I can finally start to see the big picture of my life ahead of me. 
My body may be like this, but my mind is still very much able. Thank you. Wow. Oh. oh, that's pretty, uh... This is so uh, strange. Yeah, we had her date. Lily slept with us. But then next day... Lily... Well, Lily and... Kajo friggin' crashed each other. She fell flat. She fell, and now she's pissed. Uh, something's bothering her. I wonder what. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is a good cutoff point. Uh, we've over 50 minutes of this. This has been a great, uh... This has been great so far. Uh, I don't know how far of Act 4 we have to get to. Uh, this is called Blackout. I don't know. We'll probably check it out next time. Yeah, we're gonna definitely check it out. Not probably, but we'll definitely check it out next time on Let's Play Katawa Shoujo. See you guys then.